mitigation mitigation is the reduction and adaptation adaptation introduction to mitigation and adaptation so as you all know each paper has four blocks so we have completed the first block that mev 021 so next 022 is going on 023 so today we shall start with 023 with block 1 that is introduction to mitigation and adaptation so here in this unit we have five units in this block you have five units earlier you had only four units in this block you have five units so the first one is concept of mitigation and adaptation the second unit is climate resilient pathway and unit three is global institutional mechanisms fourth one is adaptive strategies and capacities and the last unit, the fifth unit is economic policy instruments for reducing the greenhouse gas emission. So these five units you're going to study in block one, that is introduction to mitigation and adaptation. So first, let us start with the first unit that is concept of mitigation and adaptation. See the word mitigation. It is defined in different ways, but according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that is IPCC. So mitigation, climate mitigation is any action which is taken to reduce or to eliminate the long term risk and hazards is called as climate mitigation. So I'll repeat it once again. So according to Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the climate mitigation is defined as any action taken permanently to eliminate or reduce the long-term risk and hazards. Then what is adaptation? Adaptation is adjustment. Adjustments made in natural or human systems in response to the climate which moderates harm or exploits beneficial opportunities so according to ipcc the adaptation is the adjustments made in natural or human systems in response to actual or expected climatic stimuli or their effects which moderates harm or you get some beneficial opportunities so there are different reports, but the world's first report on climate change was by, which is called a Stern Review Report, identifies several ways of reducing or eliminating the climate change. So these mitigating process or procedures include the intensive goods and services, the demand for emissions, intensive goods and services, increasing efficiency gains, increasing use and development of low carbon technologies and reducing non-fossil fuel emissions. So the there are several ways of mitigating climate change. So these are reducing demand for emissions, intensive goods and services, increasing efficiency gains, increasing use and development of low carbon technologies and reducing non-fossil fuel emissions. So the interventions include the biofuels and mandatory blending requirements in a way to control the use of fossil fuel, reduction in fuel subsidies, introduction of carbon tax. So what is this carbon tax? See, it is a price instrument and it operates by taxing the carbon content of fuel inputs creating an incentive either to switch to lower carbon fuels or to use fuel more efficiently. So the technology innovations includes the mitigation of emission can be carried through a scientific techniques which reduces the emission by 1 billion metric tons per year. So there are 15 different programs ranging from using the more fuel efficient vehicles, reducing the distance traveled by vehicles, 
efficient building, transforming thermal coal plants, capturing and storing carbon, capture and use of hydrogen, use of nuclear fuel, use of wind turbine, generation of solar power, use of biomass for fuel production, and stopping the deforestation and conservation tillage in agriculture. So the mitigation measures includes the use of renewable energy, use of carbon sinks, carbon sinks means which reduces the amount of carbon, carbon credits and taxation. It These uh, measures, it aims to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. So most of these mitigation effort, it can be initiated by planning. So most countries, they have specific time-based planning and the mitigation strategy, it can be incorporated into plan targets for a particular period. So in the energy sector, the mitigate, mitigating measures include the efficiency, energy efficiency and conservation through better insulation, fluorescent lighting and transportation. So energy conservation is a practice of increasing the efficiency of use of energy and higher output can be produced at the same level of energy consumption. Residential building, commercial buildings, transportation have a significant impact on energy consumption. So specifically, industrial sector uses 38% of the total energy, followed by the transportation sector, which uses 28%, residential sector 19%, and commercial sector 16% of usage. So the planning of poor planning of infrastructure and inefficient land use lead, leads to a greater waste of energy. Hence, urban planning with focus on climate mitigation can greatly reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. So to conclude this unit, so as we all know, climate change is one of the serious challenge which is impacting our lives. There are two pillars in climate change management. One is mitigation and the other one is adaptation. So mitigation effort is made to reduce the emission rates and to remove the carbon present in the air. So it can be carried out through different methods like regulation, technology, planning, market mechanism, and social mechanisms. So the mitigation benefits are important since they justify the cost which can be measured. It can be undertaken at different levels based on the need for the same and varies with the technology level, national circumstances, etc. So mitigation cost has a precautionary aspect and it can be considered as an insurance against future cost or damage. So climate change and mitigation is a global phenomenon and international cooperation is very much necessary for the better welfare outcome and many many initiatives have been made at the global level so next one is the next unit is the climate resilient pathway so what is resilience resilience means the ability of a system and its component parts to anticipate absorb, accommodate, or recover from the effects of a hazardous event in a timely and efficient manner, including through ensuring the preservation, restoration, or improvements of its essential basic structures and functions. So reducing emissions of greenhouse gases and adopting to climate change will become increasingly more challenging in this century. So therefore, the complex relationship between the economy, society, and the environment 
requires a multidisciplinary approach to be able to address challenges of sustainable development. See, sustainability is to improve the quality of life for present and future generations by integrating environment and economic development. So sustainable development can be achieved by applying environmental friendly technologies or green technologies, especially in the developmental activities. So green technology is an application of science, knowledge or technology which decreases the impact of human activities on the environment and natural resources. So there are a number of green technologies available to treat the polluted air, sewage or any other waste material at its source of origin and green technologies create products that can be recycled or biodegradable. So use of effluent treatment plants in industries and energy generation stations reduce the greenhouse gas emission by converting the carbon dioxide into non-polluting byproducts. The technological development in the sector of renewable energy sources and these are the and including it in the world energy system these are the major pathways of sustainability as these renewable energy sources or renewable energy technologies would reduce the burning of fossil fuels especially the coal and help in reducing the global warming so research on water cycle agriculture and soil related aspects protection of marine and terrestrial biodiversity are significant from the perspective of climate resilience. So in this unit, we are going to study the technologies for sustainable development, non-conventional and renewable energy resources, energy conservation and natural resource management. So modern technological improvements offers the opportunity to shift the activities, developmental activities from fossil fuel based technologies, which are mentioned as the dirty technologies towards the development of green and clean technologies based on renewable energy resources. So achieving the sustainable development agenda including the sustainable development goals it requires reduction in the carbon emissions so a sizable number of innovative technologies developed through research and development efforts or in offering to store conserve or absorb carbon components an integral precursor of emissions in order to attenuate or offset the adverse impact of emission hazards. So scientific management of solid waste has great potential to reduce the greenhouse gases. So a very simple example, Delhi generates about 6,800 tons solid waste every day. So managing this heap of waste is not an easy task. And the most common municipal solid waste management system in the country like India is disposable at dumping sites. So it fills the land and integrated solid waste management have much more environmental benefit. When we follow three R's that is in green technology to manage the municipal solid waste, the three R's that we have to follow is reduce, reuse, and recycle. So another waste is the e-wastes, electronic wastes. So this contain, e-wastes contain certain toxic constituents such as lead, cadmium, mercury, polychlorinated biphenyls, etc., which has to be handled very safely and skillfully. So this recycling of e-waste 
through unskilled informal sectors. It leads to uncontrolled release of these toxic materials into the environment. So managing e-wastes is very expensive and it needs skills where India cannot afford. So reducing the overuse and reusing the old electronic products are the only way to overcome the situation. So apart from this, countless items like papers, cans, wires, bottles, uh, bottles of foods and drinks, it can be reusable. So recycling of most of the products is more efficient in terms of energy consumption than manufacturing the new product out of fresh depleting raw materials. So this helps to achieve the goal of sustainable development by generating employment for the urban poor with no skills. So another important uh, recyclable, recyclable measure is the vermicomposting. So the composting by using the worms. So vermicomposting is a household wherein the household organic waste is converted into manure in a very simple scientific way, which reduces the volume of waste transported to the landfills. So in India, the plastic waste disposable is done in an unscientific way through unorganized sectors. So if it is treated properly, plastic waste can be utilized in road construction and healthy, friendly remanufacturing of plastic products through recycling process. About 6% of the total methane produced by India is generated from solid waste dumping. So if the methane produced from the landfill is utilized, the collected gas can be used as a clean fuel for power generation and thus it will also help to fight global warming. So how to promote the renewable energy sources or the non-conventional energy sources? So renewable energy sources have been carried out from the past few decades and a new renewable energy sources have also been discovered. So as we all know, hydro energy is one of the oldest sources of energy and today over 80% of all the electricity produced by renewable sources is produced by the hydroelectric dams. And solar photovoltaic technology which converts the solar radiation directly into electricity without producing any noise or pollution. And the wind energy also it plays an important role in energy generation, but it varies with the latitude, land sea disposition, altitude and season. Another important renewable energy source is biomass energy with potential energy to generate power. The oceanic energy and tidal power, it is also noted that the ocean water contains energy in the form of temperature gradients, waves and tides and oceanic current can also be used to generate electricity. Heat from the earth, which is called as geothermal energy, it is accessed by drilling water or steam wells that drive the turbines to generate electricity. So geothermal energy is clean as it emits little or no greenhouse gases. So next one is the CDM, the Clean Development Mechanism of Kyoto Protocol. It provides industrialized countries and polluting industries with an incentive to invest in lowering emission in developing countries to achieve a reduction in carbon dioxide emissions that promotes sustainable development. So natural resource management. So natural resource management is a management of natural resource such as wildlife, soil, water, 
for a better sustainable quality of life for both present and future generation. So managing natural resources is very much focused to achieve the goals of sustainable development. Depleting forest resources is a major challenge for sustainable development. Rapid urbanization and unsustainable large-scale farming are replacing large forest area every day. Forest are a natural sink of carbon and at the core of water cycle and food security. So change in thought and practice towards natural resources and environment helps in achieving the goals of sustainable development in the era of climate change. So what is energy conservation? So energy conservation refers to the efforts made to reduce the overall energy consumption. So reducing the use of electricity causes less fossil fuels to be burned to provide that electricity. So energy conservation can result in increased environmental quality and economy. So energy conservation has a great potential to improve environmental quality, economy and carbon footprint. So there is a need for changes in the urban lifestyle to conserve the energy. So setting computers, monitors and copiers to use sleep mode when not in use help the climate resilient pathways. It cuts off energy cost by approximately 40%. So this is very important for both environment and economic losses. So energy conservation saves depleting fossil fuel resources as well as it reduces the greenhouse gases. So government of India, it runs a program called Bachat Lamp Yojana to reduce the cost of energy saving compact fluorescent lamps to conserve energy. So energy conservation can also be done by increasing the energy, energy use efficiency. Automobile and transportation are considered as one of the major sources of local and global pollutions as well as the main fossil fuel based energy consumers. So the automobile and transport sector has taken several steps to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions as well as other environmental impacts in many parts of the world but still has to go a long way especially in the developing countries like India. Modern internal combustion engines can use fossil fuels blended with biofuels, the fuels obtained from the plants, ethanol and biodiesel. And this kind of engines are used nowadays in some countries. So environmental friendly body designs, energy saving tires and optimization of painting processes have increased the overall energy efficiency of automobiles and transport while reducing the amount of carbon dioxide emissions from combustion. So this is about the second unit. So coming to the third unit, that is global institutional mechanisms. So global in institutional mechanisms, it highlights the initiatives initiatives taken in the at the global level so climate change has become a top tier subject for international negotiation and debate not only for environmental specialists but also for the people and institutions focused on economics development energy technology and other international issues. See, the most disconcerting fact of climate change is the worst affected people are those who have least role in buildup of global greenhouse gas and impact thereof. So though negotiations on climate change have been primarily carried under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, including the Kyoto Protocol, many other international institutions 
like the World Bank, World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, or trying to reduce or combat the climate change through various forums. So in this unit, we are going to discuss the role of UNFCCC, that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, energy-related institutions, non-bank development-focused institutions, and multi multilateral development banking institutions in climate change, climate change mitigation and adaptation. So the role of UNFCCC, we have studied in the previous block also that is in the fourth unit so in this unit also we are going to discuss the role of unf triple c energy related institutions non-bank development focused institutions multilateral development banking institutions in climate change mitigation and adaptation so modes of global intervention so the most important aspect to understand the global mechanism is how each organization contributes to the efforts of mitigation. The institutions, it can serve as forums for negotiation and high level governance, which include the country groups with a specific objective or purpose. So secondly, the international institutions can serve as not just the center for negotiation, but also regulation and action in particular sectors. So these include the International Maritime Organization, which helps in the emission controls from international shipping. World Trade Organization, it can help in the implementation of climate policies and regulating trade in low carbon technologies. And thirdly, the institutions can provide important analytical and data support to international mitigation and adaptation efforts. Organizations like the International Energy Agency, through its frequent reports and consultations with governments, it helps in facilitating international mitigation through regulation in national and international energy use. So UNDP, that is United Nations Development Program, and the World Bank, together they collect, monitor, and verify the data on emission cutting activities. So fourthly, the institutions can actually help in implementing mitigation efforts on the ground by providing the finance training and coordination of the mitigation efforts. So UNEP, World Bank, World Health Organization, and other United Nations organization finance and help coordinate mitigation efforts at the global level. So first let us study the UNFCCC. So UNFCCC, it was globally adopted in... 19 Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, actually, I'm not able to uh, see the slides. I tried logging in and logged out again, but still... It is only for you or for all of you? I, I have no idea, ma'am. I am also not able to see it, ma'am. Yes, How ma many are you? Ma'am, ma ma actually, I am also not getting fully. Okay, okay. Wait, madam, madam, slides are not visible. Shall I log out and log in again? Yes, madam. Okay, madam, slides are not visible. Not visible. Okay, I will log out and log in again, madam. Yes, madam. Okay. Students, wait for five minutes. Madam will rejoin now. 
if slides are okay. not visible and if anything is there please uh, you just uh, tell madam in between also actually uh, we send messages now visible madam Um, please unmute your mic. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. You were not able to uh, hear me earlier. Yes, ma'am. Now you are audible, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. So, so coming to the global institution mechanisms. So, climate change is one of the top tier subject for international negotiation and debate, and not only for the environmental specialists, for also the people and institutions focused on economics, development, energy technology, and other pressing international issues. Through negotiations, though nego negotiations on climate change have been primarily carried under the UNFCCC, including the Kyoto Protocol and other in international institutions like the World Bank, World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, they are trying to combat the climate change through various forums. So now let us study the role of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So this was globally adopted in 1992 at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, informally known as the Earth Summit held in Rio de Janeiro and entered into force in 1994. So as of December 2015, UNFCCC has 197 parties. So the ultimate objective is the stabilizing atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gas at levels that would prevent dangerous human interference with the climate system. So it divided the countries into three main groups with different types of commitments. So Annex 1 parties, it includes the industrial countries that were members of OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in 1992, with the countries with economies in transition like Russian Federation, Baltic and East European states. This is one group. So Annex 2 parties consist of OECD members of Annex 1, but not the economies in transition. So these countries are required to provide financial resources to enable the developing countries to undertake emissions reduction. And non-annex one parties are mostly developing countries who would undertake general obligation to formulate and implement national programs on mitigation and adaptation. So the main decision making body of the convention is its conference at conference of the parties which meets every year to review 
implementation of the convention adopts a decision to further develop the convention rules and negotiate new commitments so it is mainly committed to making a contribution to sustainable development through support for action to mitigate and to adapt to climate change at the global level regional level and national level so providing high quality support to the intergovernmental process in the context of the convention and the kyoto protocol so providing and disseminating high quality understandable and reliable information and data on climate change and on efforts to address it promoting and enhancing the act active engagement of the ngos business and industry the scientific community and other relevant stakeholders in our work and processes including through effective communication and lastly creating and maintaining a caring working environment that is conducive to self actualization of staff information sharing and teamwork and allows the delivery of the highest quality products so it also focuses the environment focused global institutions are primarily focused on environmental themes so they have additional responsibility of providing documentary and technical support to the multilateral negotiations on climate change mitigation so besides unf triple c there are other several environmental focused institutions which facilitate the mitigation efforts and the most important of them is unep united nations environment program which is designed for coordinating the un environmental activities like the global environmental facility which is the financial mechanism and the montreal protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer so this unep was founded in 1972 as the un coordinating body for the environment so unep have been helping the developing countries to create their own national plans for adoption and also preparing developing countries for unf triple c negotiations it also aims to support the capacity building activities in developing countries especially related to accessing climate finance and to act as a piloting platform for technology projects so the sectoral focused global institutions are the international civil aviation organization international maritime organization so this international civil aviation organization here in this uh, organization the aircrafts the aircraft emissions are expected to grow by 3 to 4 percent annually with the growth in the sector and reducing these emissions has become increasingly important over time so the icao would serve an important role in coordinating and implementing the mitigation measures required to keep the temperature increase well below 2 degree centigrade above the pre industrial times international maritime organization so here the shipping industry is involved in the physical transport of 90% of the goods globally so the member nations of the international maritime organization they pursued for cleaner greener and safer shipping so the total contribution from international shipping to global greenhouse gas emission is about 2.2% so in respect of climate change mitigation the international maritime organization have initiated steps to strengthen the existing mandatory requirements for new ships to be more energy efficient to encourage cooperation with ports to reduce emission from shipping then energy related institutions so international institutions which are con concerned with the energy sector have potential to contribute to climate change mitigation so these institutions are the international atomic energy agency the international energy agency the international renewable energy agency and the international
partnership for energy efficiency cooperation so further the organization of the petroleum exporting countries has a significant role to play in climate negotiation although the petroleum production and consumption are directly related to the greenhouse gas emissions so next is the non bank development focused institutions so the institutions that include but not limited to fao the world food program undp and the world health organization are significant and they are involved in the climate change related activities so to conclude this unit the third unit of the first block global climate change mitigation is one of the important component in the international context with the fact that people affected by the climate change or least responsible for it so many institutions are involved in the climate change mitigation effort and there are broadly four modes of global mechanism namely the united nations framework for negotiation on climate change environmental focused global mechanisms like unep gef and montreal protocol energy related institutions non banking development focused institutions multilateral development banking institutions etc so the main body involved primarily in the mitigation effort in the world is the united nations framework convention on climate change so the this body does not have any legal binding power but it is evolving over time to formulate policies and mechanisms to bring about reduction in greenhouse gas and contribute to mitigation so the second type of institution primarily focuses on the environment programs and includes climate change as one of the component so the other institutions which are sector oriented like the international civil aviation organization it predominantly takes the interest of aviation sector contributing in advocating for use of more climate friendly machines and quantification of global emissions so energy focused institutions like the international atomic energy agency it helps in the mitigation by promoting nuclear energy as a means to reduce the emission of greenhouse gas even organization like the international energy agency propagates and advocates alternate non conventional energy use for bringing about change in the global build up of greenhouse gases the other multilateral organizations institutions which try to include mitigation oriented programs and support projects see the other institutions involved in the mitigation are multilateral development banks regional banks like adbs which finance mitigation projects and contribute to raise climate change specific funds to bring about transfer of technology and introducing efficient energy use methods as a means to lower the greenhouse gas emission so the next fourth one the fourth unit is the adoptive strategies and capacities so the adoptive capacity means the ability of a system to get adjusted to the climate change to moderate potential damages to take advantage of opportunities or to cope with the consequences so adoptive capacity is an important element of long term adaptation to climate change so interest is growing in supporting the vulnerable people and communities to adapt to the impacts of the changing climate so in a practical term adaptive capacity is the ability to design and implement effective adaptation strategies or to react to evolving hazards and stresses to reduce the likelihood of the occurrence or the magnitude or harmful outcomes resulting from climate related hazards 
so the adaptation process requires the capacity to learn from the previous experiences to cope with the current climate and to apply these lessons to cope with the future climate so adaptation is nothing but the adjustment adjustment in ecological social or economic systems in response to actual or expected climatic stimuli and their effects or impacts so it refers to changes in processes practices or structures to moderate or offset potential damages or to take advantage of opportunities see adaptation is important in climate change issue in two ways one is assessment of impacts and vulnerabilities the other to the development and evaluation of response options so adaptation is considered as an important response option or strategy along with mitigation so greenhouse gas reduction in greenhouse gas emissions reduction in global temperature or expected to increase other changes in climate including extremes or likely and sea level will continue to rise so understanding the expected adaptations is essential to impact and vulnerability assessment hence it is a fundamental to estimating the cost or risk of climate so article 2 of unf triple c refers to dangerous human influences on climate in terms of whether they would allow ecosystems to adopt ensure food production is not threatened and enable economic development to proceed in a sustainable manner the extent to which ecosystem food supplies and sustainable development are vulnerable or in danger depends on their exposure to climate change effects and on the ability of impacted systems to adopt so thus to assess the dangerousness of climate change impact and vulnerability assessments must address the likelihood of autonomous adaptations as a necessary complement to mitigation actions so article 4.1 of unf triple c commits parties of formulating cooperating and implementing measures to facilitate adequate adaptation to climate change so the unit 5 that is economic policy instruments for reducing greenhouse gas emissions so this unit it mainly focuses on cdm that is clean development mechanism so what is this cdm so the cdm is asked in uh, several times in the previous year question papers so the cdm or clean development mechanism is a united nations run carbon offset scheme allowing the countries to fund greenhouse gas emissions reducing the projects in other countries and claim the saved emissions as a part of their own effort to meet to meet the international emission targets it is one of the three flexible mechanisms defined in the kyoto protocol the cdm the clean development mechanism defined in article 12 of the protocol was intended to meet two objectives first one to assist the non annex 1 countries that is the developing countries to achieve sustainable development and to reduce their carbon footprints and the second objective is to assist annex 1 countries that is industrialized nations in achieving compliance with their <coughs> excuse me achieving compliance with their emissions reduction commitments so these are the two objectives of cdm the kyoto protocol is one of the legally binding agreement that arose out of unf triple c to tackle the climate change through a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions so countries are legally bound to reduce man made greenhouse gases emissions by approximately 5.2% so the protocol was adopted the kyoto protocol was adopted at the third conference of the parties to the unf triple c in kyoto kyoto that is japan on 11th december 
So this uh, Kyoto Protocol, it devised three innovative mechanisms. One is joint implementation. Second one is international emission trading. Third one is clean development mechanism. So the first two mechanisms are relevant to developed countries. Whereas CDM is related to developing countries like India. So a CER, CER is certified emission reduction is given by the CDM executive board to projects in developing countries to certify that they have reduced greenhouse gas emission by one ton of carbon dioxide per year. So one CER, CER that is certified emission reduction. So one CER is equivalent to one ton of carbon dioxide reduced. So the six greenhouse gases which increases, which, which is responsible for global warming are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, HFCs, PFCs and sulfur hexafluoride. So what makes a project eligible for CDM? A project is eligible for CDM benefits if the project results in a net decrease in greenhouse gas emission and which is called as additionality. So there are different types of CDM projects like renewable energy, hydro, wind, biomass, solar, biogas based cogeneration, clean energy that is waste heat recovery and utilization and natural gas, energy efficiency, green building and energy efficient lighting, cooling and heating, HFC, PFC abatement, afforestation or reforestation, methane, landfill, gas recovery and utilization. So the project activities under CDM, yes, must it should be the it should be hosted by the non annex parties like India that have ratified the Kyoto Protocol and established a designated national authority developed by public or private entities authorized by the relevant host party and annex one party involved in the project activity. It is validated by a des designated operational entity in accordance with CDM project eligibility and participation requirements. It is registered by the CDM executive board after review by a registration and issuance team to ensure the compliance with the international rules. Once commissioned and operational verified and certified by a DOE that is operational designated operational entity as resulting in real additional measurable and verifiable reductions in greenhouse gas emission below baseline scenario. So baseline is if a project gets 20,000 CERs, it means that its emissions are 20,000 tons of carbon dioxide less than a reference point called a baseline. So a baseline for CDM project gives the greenhouse gas emissions that would have occurred in the absence of the proposed CDM project activity. So there are different steps in baseline methodology. First one is identifying the baseline scenario. Second step is to define the data sources and assumptions. The third step is estimating the baseline. Fourth step is evaluating baseline methodology. Fifth step is assessment of uncertainties. Sixth step is monitoring of baseline methodology. So the legal issues of CDM is the role and nature of carbon contracts, CERC regulations for sharing the CDM benefits and CDM project risk identification and management. So second one is the defining data source assumption to describe the parameters and assumptions to list out the data used and its sources and to determine the spatial level of data and estimating the baseline. So the three baseline approaches are the emissions actual or historical, emissions of most economic options, weighted average of similar projects. So justification of this choice should be done on the following basis. Firstly, Consistency with the context of applicable project types, consistency with the underlying algorithms and data sources used in baseline methodology, and one that most closely reflects the process used for calculating baseline emissions. 
So step four is evaluating the baseline methodology. So the two parameters for evaluation is relevance and robustness. So relevance is the applica applicability of baseline methodology, strength and weakness. Robustness is transparency or conservativeness. Step five is ass assessment of uncertainties related to assumptions and variables. And step six is monitoring of baseline methodology. So continuous monitoring should be done to understand the changes in the scenario, changes in underlying assumptions, impact of the above changes on original estimates. The CDM project cycle includes preparation of project design document, which we call it as PDD. And second step is approval of host country. Third one is <coughs> the validation of project by DOE. Fourth step is registration of project by UNFCCC. Next is monitoring of project activity, verification and certification of CERs by DOEs, issuance of CEO CERs by UNFCCC. So the project's contribution to sustainable development is social well-being, economic well-being, environment well-being, and technological well-being. So the project should lead to alleviation of poverty by generating additional employment, removal of social disparities leading to improvement in quality of life of people, economic well-being, it gives the project should bring the additional investment consistent with the needs of the people and environmental well-being includes a discussion of impact of the project activity on resource sustainability and resource degradation and technological well-being is the activity should lead to a transfer of environmental safe and sound technologies that are comparable to the best practices so this is about the CDM. Next one is emission trading. So it is a market mechanism which is administered to control pollution by providing incentives for exchanging emission reduction certificates and thereby bring about reduction in greenhouse gas emission. So global trading mechanism, it opens a new trade opportunities with prospect for gradual reduction of emissions, particularly by the developed nations under Annexion 1 categories. So various national and international programs undertaken by the government and voluntarily by the non-government agencies have positively impacted on progressive reduction of emissions in many parts of the world. So it is possible for a country to reduce emissions using a regulatory framework like the direct and indirect taxes. But the main disadvantage of emission trading is that, is that the cost of abatement of mitigation varies with the countries. So next one is carbon markets. So the development of emission trading has introduced a new type of trading system specifically for carbon dioxide, which is calculated in tons of carbon dioxide or its equivalent and currently makes up the bulk of emission trading. So the exchange market, which deals with the transaction of carbon is popularly called as the carbon market. It is one of the way where the countries makes up the bulk of emission trading. So the carbon market market is steadily increasing in recent years. And the other one is renewable energy certificates. So renewable energy certificates, or it is also called as green tax. They are transferable rights of renewable energy within American states. So a renewable energy provider, it gets issued one green tag for each 1,000 kilowatts of energy it produces. The energy is sold into the electrical grid and the certificates can be sold on the open market for profit. 
these are purchased by the firms or individuals in order to identify a portion of their renewable sources and or voluntary so they are typically used like an offsetting scheme or to show corporate responsibility although their issuance in unregulated with no national registry to ensure there is no double counting however it is one way that an organization could purchase its energy from a local provider who uses fossil fuels but back it with a certificate that supports a specific a uh, wind or hydroelectric project so to conclude the fifth unit one of the most indigenous mechanism for mitigation is the effective use of market to bring about stipulated reduction in emission of pollutant especially the greenhouse gases the clean development mechanism projects were initiated to spread the mitigation drive across the globe under UNFCCC so the main idea of cdm is to bring in more rapid flow of resources in both developed and developing countries whereby technologies will be transferred and efficient means of growth will be used to bring about a cleaner environment thereby bring down the greenhouse gas levels the cdm's condition of additionally made many projects to qualify and losing credibility it even did not bring sustainable development as many projects were considered not to mitigate climate change as projected the operational weakness and governance and delays in implementation are some of the critical aspects of cdm so the new system that was introduced was the global trading system of carbon where emission were traded and countries and companies were able to help each other by providing the lesser cost options and in turn benefiting all stakeholders so carbon market have expanded enormously and it holds tremendous potential so india has been a large supply of carbon certificates the whole carbon market has been evolving and it has brought structural changes in the accounting process so this is about the last unit that is unit 5 so this there are four blocks in mev 0 to 3 so the title of the paper is mitigation and adaptation to climate change so in this the first block is introduction to mitigation and adaptation so in this first block you have five units first one is concept of mitigation and adaptation climate resilient pathway global institutional mechanisms adaptive strategies and capacities economic policy instruments for reducing greenhouse gas emission so the first unit that is the concept of mitigation and adaptation so we have seen certain technology innovations the scientific techniques which reduces the emission and the planning so most countries have specific time based planning and the mitigation strategy so each uh, sector has its own mitigating potential and next one to conclude this topic the climate change just a minute just a minute so the first unit yes the climate change is one of the serious challenge impacting our lives mitigations are the effort if it reduces the emission rate it can be carried out through different methods like regulation technology planning market mechanism and social mechanism and mitigation benefits are important since they justify the cost which can be measured and it is mitigation 
cost as a precautionary aspect and it can be considered as an insurance against future cost or damage. The second uh, unit is climate resilient pathway where the uh, see this uh, resilience is the preservation or restoration or improvement of the essential basic structures and functions and you have a number of green technologies technological development renewable energy resources then modern technological improvement innovative technologies scientific management of solid waste and also the skillful method of handling the e-wastes vermicomposting then the landfill how to reduce the landfills how to utilize the methane which is generated from solid waste dumping promotion of non-conventional and renewable energy sources natural resource management energy conservation increase in energy use efficiency so all this in the second unit in the third unit that is global institutional mechanisms so you have the united nations framework convention on climate change and world bank the international institutions like world bank world trade organization international monetary fund etc so modes of global intervention the role of unf triple c and unep sectoral forced focused global institution like international civil aviation organization international maritime organization energy related institutions non bank development focused institutions etc so this unit concludes that the global climate change mitigation is one of the important component where a number of institutions are involved in climate change mitigation and there are broadly four modes of global mechanism united nations framework for negotiation on climate change environmental focused global mechanism then energy related institutions non banking development focused institutions multilateral development banking institutions etc so the institutions are primarily focused on environmental programs includes the climate change as one of the component so the sector oriented institutions like international civil aviation organization it takes the interest of aviation sector and energy focused institutions help in mitigating and promoting the nuclear energy as a means to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases other multilateral organizations like fao and undp or development based institutions which try to include mitigation oriented programs and support projects the fourth one is adoptive strategies and capacities so it is the ability of a system to adjust to the climate change so it may be adjustment in ecological social or economic systems in response to the actual or expected climatic stimuli and the effects or impacts then understanding the impact and vulnerability assessment then the fifth one the fifth unit it is mainly the clean development mechanism it is a united nations run carbon offset scheme which allows the countries to fund greenhouse gas emission reducing projects in other countries and claim the saved emissions as part of their own efforts to meet the international emission targets it has two objectives first one to assist the non annex countries that is the developing nations to achieve sustainable development and re reduce their carbon footprints and second objective it is mainly predominantly in industrial industrialized nations in achieving compliance with their emission reduction commitments then the one of the in the kyoto protocol one of the mechanism of kyoto protocol is the cdm it is related to developing countries which issues the cers and one cer is equivalent to one ton of carbon dioxide and a project is eligible for cdm benefits if the project 
will result in a net decrease in greenhouse gas emission. So there are different types of CDM projects related to renewable energy, clean energy, energy efficiency, uh, methane, landfill, landfill gas recovery, utilization, etc. Then the project activities, then the baseline methodology, legal issues, and you have different steps in baseline methodology. So first one is to identify the baseline scenario. Secondly, defining the data sources and assumptions, estimating the baseline, evaluating the baseline, assessment of uncertainties, monitoring of baseline methodology. And you have the CDM project cycle where you have seven different steps. And the project's contribution to sustainable development is for social well-being, economic well-being, environmental well-being, and technological well-being. So apart from CDM, you have the emission trading, where it is a new trade opportunity with respect to gradual reduction of emission, particularly by the developed nations under Annexion 1 categories. Then the carbon ma market, which deals with the transaction of carbon. And it is one of the way which where the country makes up the bulk of emission trading and renewable energy certificates or green tax or transferable rights for renewable energy with American states. Then a renewable energy provider gets issued one green tag for each 1,000 kilowatts of energy it produces. And to conclude the last topic, the CDM project was initiated to spread the mitigation drive across the globe under UNFCCC. So the main idea of CDM was to bring more rapid flow of resources in both developed and developing countries whereby technologies will be transferred and efficient means of growth will be used to bring about a cleaner environment, thereby bring down the greenhouse gas levels. So carbon mar market have expanded enormously and holds a tremendous potential and India is one of the large supply of carbon certificates and the whole carbon market has been evolving and has brought structural changes in the accounting process. So this is about the first block with five units. So tomorrow at same time, so we shall discuss the second block that is agriculture, forestry and other land uses. Thank you.